Hello everybody, David Shapiro here with a video. So as many of you know, um, OpenAI has uh, created a competition, a challenge of sorts for people to apply to get a $100,000 grant to solve this problem of democratic inputs to AI. So I'm not gonna read the whole thing to you, but the TLDR is that uh, because of the complex moral landscape of AI, the fact that things like ChatGPT are global and they have the ability to um, interact with people across all walks of life, uh, all religions, all nationalities, all languages, uh, they realized that it is important to understand what are the boundaries, what are the constraints um, that these chatbots should abide by, or AI in general. Uh, and so they basically want a way to get uh, global input um, from hundreds, thousands, millions of people in a very rigorous manner in order to answer a bunch of uh, various research questions. So I mentioned previously that uh, the Gato community, um, which is the Global Alignment Taxonomy Omnibus community that I built, uh, they are working on their own version, but uh, I also just went ahead and built my own submission. I'm not even going to apply to the grant because I don't need it. Um, so let me just go ahead and share with you what I have done. So I'm going to start with the final output, uh, because this is, this is the goal for every conversation that it has, and then we'll unpack everything. Um, so anyways, uh, here's, here's the output. So I, I took one of the, um, research questions here and I gave it to myself. Um, and so then I had a conversation with it and then I asked it to summarize, uh, that conversation um, in a more rigorous, simplified way. So the idea is that um, OpenAI or whoever can take this and then use this framework and send the survey out to millions of people and get um, get this clean data back uh, that can be used to to dis to explore that moral space or that epistemic space uh, for any any research question. And one thing I want to point out is that this methodology uh, could work for any research question, any survey question, whether it has to do with AI or not. Uh, so this is a very powerful tool, which is why I'm going to go ahead and release it because uh, waiting until October, that's basically a century away in AI time. Um, so we need this out there now. Um, all right, so summary. The user believes that AI should uphold universal principles such as individual liberty, even when faced with local or cultural uh, or legal norms that may conflict with these principles. They argue that by, by promoting higher principles, AI could contribute to a positive change in societies where certain groups face systematic unfairness or oppression. The user's moral framework revolves around three core axioms. Suffering is bad, prosperity is good, and understanding is good. They believe that AI should use its best reasoning to balance these axioms when handling sensitive topics, taking into account the potential risks and consequences for the user. The user acknowledges that sometimes people may not be ready for certain conversations, and AI should make a judgment on what the person is ready for, using the core axioms as a guidepost. Anyone who has watched my work on morality, reasoning, and philosophy will understand exactly what's going on here. Um, so basically what I did was I asked it to summarize the key points based on the research question from the conversation. So this was an entire conversation um, with the chatbot that was then summarized into this is the answer to the research question. And then I asked it to also evaluate it, um, uh, basically, basically saying like, okay, this is the framework that the user uses so that we can understand their reasoning, their reaction to logic, ethics, emotions, whatever. Um, and so this is, this is like, imagine a researcher taking notes on the conversation. So this is an automated annotation. Um, the user's approach to the research question is grounded in a, in a post-conventional morality, emphasizing the importance of universal principles and individual liberty. Their moral framework is based on three core axioms, minimizing suffering, promoting prosperity, and fostering understanding, which they use to guide their reasoning on how AI should handle sensitive topics. The user demonstrates an awareness of the potential risks and consequences associated with discussing certain topics and advocates for a balanced approach where AI should consider the user's readiness for a conversation and prioritize the core axioms. This approach reflects a nuanced understanding of the complexities involved in navigating cultural and legal differences while upholding human rights and individual liberties. Um, so, uh, you know, this is uh, 
this is something I have spent quite a bit of uh, time researching. So of course, it's uh, a little bit kinder about um, that. Okay, so how did we get here? So let's go to the repo. Oh, and this is all open source and public already, by the way. Um, so here's the repo. It's uh, under Dave Schapp slash uh, Democratic AI inputs. Um, so first, we're going to look at the chatbot, uh, which is pretty straightforward. Um, you've probably seen a lot of this code before. You get user input, you compose a conversation, et cetera, et cetera. It's really, really straightforward. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that right at the beginning, um, it just asks you for your name. Um, and so then it, it injects that as so that the conversation from the chatbot's perspective always starts with, hello, my name is blank. Um, and that is, I found that that is actually just a really good way to cue off the conversation so that the first thing that the user sees after that is the chatbot greeting them. Um, and so it's pretty straightforward. Um, then it just has an, a while uh, loop. And then basically what it does is you just type done to exit. Um, and interestingly enough, because I gave it instructions to be a survey chatbot, um, it'll get to a certain point and it'll say like, you know, this is what I understand uh, your beliefs are. And it'll summarize your beliefs back to you and, and give you a conclusion. And it'll invite you to keep talking if there's anything wrong with it. Um, but, and so for, uh, if you want to take a look, I actually saved my conversation here. And this is where it dumps all the data to. So here's the raw chat log. Um, and actually, I, I, uh, I, I had it set so that it didn't save the, the um, API's last response. So I modified it so that you can't you you actually don't see uh, Chat GPT's last response, but it basically just kind of summarized my beliefs back to me, um, and and I agreed with how it articulated it. So then I typed done, and it was done. Um, but so you see, here is the um, chat logs, and so the way that it saves the chat logs is that uh, it saves the chat timestamp and then the the user's name in a YAML file, and so that if say for instance you set this up on a web interface and you have um, you know, hundreds, thousands, millions of people using it, you're pretty much always going to get a, a unique timestamp um, as to when that conversation was started. And then you also get the, the username, um, which uh, is, as you noticed, is actually removed from the evaluation. Um, it's not actually present here because we, uh, I, I figured we would deduplicate it uh, so that that way you, um, you respect people's privacy, basically. So you only, you only retain a timestamp and a first name or, or stated name. Um, so this is, this is pretty private. I also ex I deliberately excluded demographic information, um, because I didn't want something like that to, um, uh, do any implicit bias into the chat bot. Um, so like basically you take the, you take the user's expressed words, um, and you uh, and you uh, you take it at I don't want to say face value because that has a negative connotation, but basically you give the user credibility. You say this, you know, I'm going to just take your words and rather than uh, you know interpret it, saying like you know if it's a if it's um, uh, unless I say something like in the the case of like LGBT rights, unless I say that like I'm gay or bi or trans or whatever, um, it's not going to have that background information now. From a research perspective, I could imagine that you might want that information, um, but for the sake of just establishing the scope of the uh, of the moral space, I don't think it's ne it's actually necessary. But I'll let that uh, that decision be up to whoever wants to implement this, because you might have a user survey, like you know, share your age, your location, or whatever. Um, but basically, if you get a million of these things, you're going to find that the, 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 the moral space, um, that that should, that that question should be answered in. Okay. So that's the chat. Um, the question is saved here. So the question is, um, this is the one that I use. What principles should guide AI when handling topics that involve both human rights and local cultural or legal differences like LGBT, LGBTQ rights and women's rights? Should AI responses change based on the location of the culture in which it's used? So this, you save the question here. Whatever your research question is, you save it here. Uh, and, and it's used by both the chat and the evaluator. So that's the chat. That's the evaluator. Here's the main system message. So this is, this is really the secret sauce. Um, and so this is a format of system message that I found works incredibly well for uh, the OpenAI, the ChatGPT API. 
Overall purpose, you are an investigative survey chatbot focused on morality, ethics, and epistemology. Your primary goal is to help the user identify and articulate the axiomatic assumptions they hold. The greater purpose you serve is to act as a survey tool to help democratize inputs to a wide number of public and social issues. In this respect, your goal is to extract information from users that can later be consolidated and used for research purposes. Research question. This is the current research question you are tasked with asking users about. The research question may include contextual information such as background, social, legal, political, or events. You do the best you can to answer questions about the context of the research question, but keep in mind that most of this information is provided for your use so as to enhance the quality and specificity of your, of your survey behavior. And then I have the uh, placeholder for the question here. Epistemic techniques. Socratic reasoning or Socratic dialogue. This is a form of argumentative dialogue that aims to stimulate critical thinking and illuminate ideas. It involves asking and answering questions to stimulate rational thinking to expose contradictions in one beliefs, thus refining them. First principles thinking. This is a mode of inquiry that involves breaking down complicated problems to their most basic self-evident principles or facts and then reasoning up from there. Scientific method. Uh, so on and so forth. Falsification, critical thinking, reductionism and holism. Behavioral guidelines. Avoid sycophancy. Uh, avoid placating users even if they become frustrated or obstinate. Instead, if you observe any kind of emotion or dissonance, take a moment to address that topic. Invite them to explore their hang-up, frustration, or confusion. Educate and inform. Do not assume that your user is a topical expert, but do assume that they are eager to uh, and open to learning. If there is a topic that they seem uh, to not be well-versed in, ask them if they would like to explore a given topic. Avoid info dumping without permission. Because, uh, as you know, ChatGPT often does that. <laughs> um, unpack and investigate. Play co pay close attention and read between the lines to help users identify their beliefs, understandings, and knowledge. Ask probing questions to get at the core of their mind. Spotlight, spotlight and articulate. If you notice assumptions, axioms, or other salient content within the mind of the user, point it out to them and use reflective listening to see if they agree with your understanding of their mind. Uh, <clears throat> name things. Use appropriate proper names for concepts, terms, and principles. For instance, if someone makes the assertion all truth is relative, they may not realize that this is a postmodernist way of thinking. Make sure to label concepts, terms, and ideas. This serves the dual purpose of clearing up misunderstandings. Um, ask a user what school of thought they are operating from. Ask questions. Ask clarifying uh, uh Ask for clarification and seek mutual understanding. Remember, you are an investigative chatbot. And then finally, meet them where they are. Modulate your tone and, and the sophistication of your vocabulary based upon the user's responses. If they seem like they are educated, use more erudite language. Conversely, if they are struggling, simplify your language and delivery into more concrete terms. Okay, so that is how this set of instructions provides very, very clear instructions as to how to conduct the survey. And it works really well. I've tried it a few times for myself. Um, now, uh, once you get the evaluation, or here, let me show you the, the system evaluation. Um, overall purpose, you are a uh, research bot tasked with reading, evaluating, condensing, and otherwise clearly articulating the chat log between a user and another chat bot. Your highest goal is to clearly state the user's beliefs, reasoning, and position with respect to the research question. You are participating in a data prep and data cleaning step. You will also analyze and evaluate the user's conversation to identify inner particular schools of thought, moral paradigms, or other frameworks. Research question. This is the research question the other ta uh, chatbot was tasked with. So basically saying, this is, this is what we're evaluating. Output format. Your response should have two sections, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I already showed you. So basically I specified it, output it in YAML. Excuse me. So first it summarizes the, the, the uh, conversation and then it performs an evaluation. Level of detail. While your job is to condense and summarize, please err on the side of too much. It would be better to have an overly verbose evaluation rather than an overly simplified one. For instance, it's okay to include illustrative examples from the conversation if they are present. We can always reduce word count later. This step is merely a first pass at the data processing. Uh, therefore, we need enough detail to continue performing experiments. We may need certain kinds of information in the future that we cannot anticipate right now. Next step. The user will now submit a chat log in YAML format. Uh, read this YAML information, remove any user information for privacy, and output your summary and valuation according to the YAML, above YAML format. Note, your entire response will be saved into YAML, so your output should only include summary and evaluation fields. Do not reply with any other conversation framing or questions. In other words, your entire response must be properly formatted YAML, ready to be saved to file. And of course, you saw over here that, um, let's see, do, 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 evaluations. 
I literally just took the output, saved it to, uh, to YAML, and it worked. I didn't have to do any other preparation. Um, so there you have it. Uh, and now imagine you do this for millions and millions and millions of users all over the world on hundreds of thousands of different issues. And then you, you can take these and you can, um, you can, you can do embeddings, right? And, and you can do a map of embeddings and create a knowledge graph or, you know, a scatter plot of where the evaluations are. And then you can navigate it and use further, uh, summarization operations to arrive at, a moral space, a principle space, uh, and create a very rigorous data set, a very robust data set about what people believe. Now, one thing that I want to point out is that a consensus tool like this is incredibly powerful for literally every issue on the planet, ranging from bioethics to energy to war to law. Uh, politicians can use it to um, imagine if every Put it this way, imagine if every issue that came up, whether it is um, a public event like, you know, a celebrity scandal or a piece of legislation or an upcoming election, imagine you had this level of information for literally everyone on the planet and you could and you could have this thing that very, very uh, uh, effectively interrogates uh, humans all over the world to figure out what they believe and why. Imagine how much we can change the world, not just with respect to AI, but imagine how much we can we can create a lot more transparency and understanding uh, by using a tool like this. So this is why I wanted to go ahead and just make this fully public, fully open source. Um, yeah, and I I. I I am not shy about my personal beliefs, so that's why I left the example up here so that you can see how the conversation flows. Um, yeah, but I think it's done. Um, so please use this. Uh, if you want to apply with, um, you know, to OpenAI's challenge, use my code. I don't care. It's under the MIT license. Um, you know, I serve a higher purpose here. I'm not trying to make money on this. Um, and if you... Uh, Ah, crap. I lost my train of thought. Anyways, take it, run with it. Thanks for watching. Cheers.